we witness video snippets of massive groups of people going about their daily lives at the opening of the movie. Praising in the stadium, praying, and taking the subway. In these inserts, there are numerous people present throughout, Aaron, a young man, starts gathering his camping supplies and climbing equipment at his apartment in preparation for a weekend camping trip. He pays attention to the voicemail. He is asked to consider and practice a new repertoire by a young woman named Sonia. Aaron seems to participate in a local music group in addition to his work and adventurous activities. Additionally, Sonia begs him to phone his mother since she is concerned. Aaron forgets to pack his most crucial item, a folding Swiss knife, and cannot find it after searching the closet, even in the dead of night, Aaron travels out of town and into the woods. He arrives at Canyons, Utah, before sunrise. Aaron starts to record a video. He informs us that it is Friday, April 25, 2003, in it. Aaron shouts excitedly that he is headed to the canyons, where it would be just him, the music, and the night. He then parks at a space that has been occupied by other hikers who share his extreme enthusiasm for extreme relationships. He marks his waypoints and then takes a nap. It is dawn. Aaron mounts his bicycle and pedals through the desert. He exudes confidence and has a lot of enthusiasm. He performs a variety of antics while riding his bike and claims in the video that he hopes to arrive at the climbing point 45 minutes sooner than it often takes others to do so. Aaron is speeding along and having a good time when he hits a hole and his bike takes off flying down the slope. However, he causes no harm, and it serves as merely a pretext for him to take more selfies. He proceeds. After leaving the bike behind and stopping for a brief meal, Aaron ascends the foothills on foot while taking in the scenery. Point two female hikers who appear to be lost are spotted, he observes. They respond that they are searching for the dome when he asks if they are going to Blue John Canyon. With a map in hand, Aaron offers to escort them to the dome and provides them with directions. At first, the girls are terrified of him, but he eventually calms them down. Christy and Megan The two girls consent to accompany him. As they converse, it becomes clear that Aaron is an accomplished hiker in this area who already views the canyons as his second home and that the distance to the parking lot is 44 kilometers, the right fork, marked in the handbook, is where Aaron directs the girls. But he offers to take his more steeper route rather than following it. The females concur. The group crosses a deep, narrow chasm while resting their feet on the other side. I believe Aaron is an engineer. He then says he will be okay before heading down. The terrified females start screaming, but it turns out that Aaron jumped down into the subterranean lake by himself. He then calls to the girls that everything is fine. The girls enjoy jumping down as well. The females then jump down again while being recorded, shrieking with glee. The trio then continues their journey. In honor of the Booch Cassidy gang cook, Blue John Canyon was given its name, according to Aaron. These rocks were once the gang's hiding place. When the girls invite Aaron to a party tomorrow, he accepts their invitation and escorts them to the meeting place before bidding them farewell. But when he departs, the girls believe he has already forgotten everything about them. Aaron enjoys solitude in the mountains while capturing images and listening to music while wearing headphones. He attempts to rely on an unstable rock as he attempts to climb another tight gorge before flying down and the rock flying with him. Aaron discovers himself imprisoned at the base of the gorge. A large rock has pinched his hand, trapping it between him and the wall with no way to free it. Even though the stone is hefty and stuck, Aaron tries to lift it. Nothing works when he tries to climb up from underneath and use his foot to push the stone down. He rips the watch from his free hand with his teeth and starts to yell. Hoping to get Megan and Christie's attention. Of course, nobody replies. Aaron gathers the resources. He spreads out his watch, headphones, flashlight, ordinary folding knife, camera, keys, and other miscellaneous items on a rock and wonders what to do with them all. He uses the knife to attempt to carve a rock, but it is difficult and useless, and he also drops it before being able to pick it up. 
After some time, he succeeds in picking up the knife while holding a twig between his toes. It gets dark. Aaron attempts to chisel the stone despite being extremely chilly, securing it with a rope for security. Sunday finally comes. Water is in a flask that Aaron holds onto. Then he thinks back to a time when he saw a gigantic rock perched at the lip of a canyon and pondered how he got there. He climbs the slings to the top and secures them there using his engineering expertise. Aaron is delighted that he can finally get warm when light and warmth start to fall into the canyon in the morning. He recalls watching a stunning sunrise with his father when he was little. Aaron documents on camera the passage of 24 hours since becoming trapped in the canyon fissure. In case they discover his remains later, he just in case leaves a message for his parents. He claims that because his pinned arm hasn't had blood flow for 24 hours, it's probably over. There is just about half a liter of water and very little food left. Stone dust then starts to descend from above. Aaron yells for help. Thinking someone else is traveling this path, but there is no one there, and only the echo echoes his cries, Aaron protects himself by surrounding himself with whatever he can before another night. He recalls that the girls had invited him to a party at this time, and he longs to be there as he imagines everyone enjoying themselves while drinking, eating, and dancing. He takes out his contacts, eats them, and realizes he hasn't phoned his mother in a while. Additionally, he recalls that he failed to inform his employer of his specific destination. And as a result, no one is aware of his current location. It's almost Monday. Aaron further encircles the stone with ropes. Even though the rope system is supposed to help him lift the boulder, Aaron is unable to move it even a small distance. Aaron recalls how the soda consumed practically all of the remaining water in the vehicle. He adds another note, noting that he can only be extricated from the rock by eight strong men, that he only has 150 grams of water remaining, that he has also urinated in a bicycle flask, and that something will have to settle in that area. He also observes that the rock sits much tightly after he gouges some of it out. Aaron puts a tourniquet around his arm and attempts to sever it with a knife. However, the knife is extremely dull and cannot even scratch the flesh. Aaron regrets accepting his mother's gift of inexpensive Chinese-made tools for Christmas, Aaron spills some of the water when he drops the flask while attempting to sip again. Aaron recalls the times when they used to go out and party together, how he would sit in the snow naked in the car. And how he would cheat on his girlfriend. Then rain begins to fall in the canyon. Although Aaron is happy, the rain quickly turns into a torrent and floods the canyon. It swells. Aaron is able to pick up a rock, get his hand out, and release himself while submerged. He emerges from the water, makes it to his car, and travels to the girl's house in an attempt to communicate with her. However, she closes the door in his face. Aaron is still at the bottom of the canyon when it all turns out to be a dream. Tuesday early morning. Aaron is putting on his own show and making a spectacle of himself for the camera. He estimates that he won't be reported missing until at least mid-Wednesday and believes he will likely pass away by then. He regrets not letting anyone know where he was going. He runs out of water and starts experiencing heart issues. He stabs a knife in his hand to try to get better. Wednesday While watching the film on replay, Aaron attempts to drink urine and sees the scene where he and the girls are swimming in the lake. He notices that the females have left him a message even though he hasn't seen it, speaking with him about various topics and merrily assessing his musical preferences and lack of a girlfriend. He now starts having hallucinations, Thursday. Aaron remembers how his fiancée broke up with him at the game and warned him that he would be lonely for a long time. As he speaks to his mother, his fiancée, and Butch Cassidy's cook, he is already starting to rave. Aaron is knocked to the ground as additional rocks fall on him. You can see that he etched his name, his age, and the phrase, peace to your ashes, on the cave wall over the course of one night. He tries to remove his hand from behind the stone again after experiencing another glimpse from the past and hears a loud crunch. He pulls his hand a few more times in agony, causing it to crunch a few more times and shatter a bone. 
Aaron now starts to hack his gangrenous, swollen hand using the smallest, least sharp knife blade he can find. Aaron is in excruciating pain, and the tourniquet is causing his arm to bleed, but he perseveres and eventually manages to free himself, leaving his severed arm beneath a rock. Aaron binds his arm and exits the gorge after getting over his shock and realizing he is at last free. Even though he can see the light and the sea, he still needs to descend a sheer cliff to reach it. However, he strikes it lucky and locates a location to fasten the rope he possesses. Aaron collapses and drowns himself by falling face first into a muddy pool of water. He then resumes his adventure into the wasteland after replenishing his flask. He loses strength and notices vultures already circling overhead. But he is able to glimpse a family of hikers and call for help before going unconscious. Aaron is helped by each person who leads him to another, and ultimately a rescue chopper shows up and flies Aaron to safety. Again, there are photos of a large crowd, journalists doing interviews, Aaron swimming in the sea with one arm, and people engaging in extreme sports, according to the legend. He began dating his wife after three years, they welcomed a child in 2010, and although he still climbs mountains and navigates canyons, he now always leaves a note indicating where he has been.